waiting, waiting. Hopefully it's starting. I think it started. Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys. <sighs> this is gonna be hilarious. And hopefully you'll walk away with um, some, some things of, to know what not to do. <laughs> You're watching Ballerina Badass. My name's Georgia Reed. And tonight, in honor of World Ballet Day, which again, 2020, what a crazy year, watching these dancers all over the world trying to rehearse with masks, with social distancing, with everything going on, it's crazy. And I'm like, you know what would be a great idea? It'd be a great idea if I try and get back into my sugar plum fairy tutu and show dancers a few tips and tricks for dealing with trying to perform this solo in really tight, problematic places. So first things first, let's get real here, right? See this tutu? So this tutu, the, the bodice and the, and the tutu itself, these were handmade by the incredible Sarah Bacon. Um, I don't know if she still is making custom tutus, but probably she does all kinds of competition tutus and things like that. But she's, she's just wonderful. And then she actually helped me select some of these um, pieces and then I hand sewed all of these pieces on. So I got to like design the tutu. And then when I performed this again at Lauridsen Center, they added on this extra pink stuff and um, they put a bunch of other pink on it that I hated. Sorry, Diane, but oh my God. But I told you, I told Diane from the start, I hate the extra pink. And she's like, too bad, little girls love pink. So more pink, please. And they put more pink on it. Rip that off. So now it's a closer to what it was in the first place. But here's the thing. Um, <laughs> when I was doing Sugar Plum, I was dancing every day, minimum four to eight hours a day. And tonight when I put it on, um, let's see, it's been three years since I've danced that much. So um, I'm really proud of the fact that my husband was able to close almost all of the bottom ones, but none of the top ones are going. As you can see, it's a nightmare back here. It is an absolute nightmare and it's not gonna close at all. So am I a thin person? Yes, I am. Am I a in shape ballet dancer? No, I'm not. Either that or I was really unhelpfully thin four, three, four years ago. And at the time, remember, I'm gonna just say this again, three, four years ago when I was at my thinnest, I thought I was overweight. I absolutely thought I was horribly overweight and just terrible. So tonight, I am gonna leave it on. I'm, I mean, my God, the, the puffs actually went on. These things used to be um, loose on my arms and now my arms puff around the puffs. It's, it's hilarious, but they went on. So I'm going, win! <laughs> I'm gonna put this on over this so that I don't look entirely unseemly because what I want to focus on tonight you guys is more about what it is to be a freelance professional dancer or even you know a professional dancer in a company my nose is running I'm, I'm not sick sick you guys I'm just like a little bit of allergies I think anyways it's about dealing with performing all over the place you know one of the ways companies make money is getting invited to do performances in different areas for special fundraising events or benefits or whatever and uh, you know if you read Ginger Rogers autobiography she talks about going and performing I think for the president and they said oh here's your performance space and it was about this big total it was slick as ice and she had to do a whole tap dance routine on it uh, if you read Maya Plisetskaya's autobiography, she talks about having to wear her point shoes like in the car to the event and then getting out in her point shoes and tutu and running up to the stage in the freezing cold and having to perform. It is crazy. And I've had to do that too. I, I think every dancer I've talked to has talked about the crazy conditions because somehow people just believe that you just sort of, it's like, oh, it's like wearing running shoes and you're just gonna walk up and I don't know, like sing or, or talk or act or anything else. And they don't understand with ballet, you know, you need the right floor, you need the right um, room to perform the piece. You need it to be uh, bouncy and, and, and a, a sprung floor so that you don't injure yourself. Psst, please, dancing on concrete, dancing. I've danced at the Million Dollar Theater in downtown Los Angeles back 
way back when and it was falling apart and the stage had divots underneath they'd put down some marley but underneath you could feel places where there were just holes in the stage holes and so you would like roll into these little divots in the ground there were nails strewn across the stage you have to be careful not to step on them dirt paint some stage stages are painted so then as you're dancing all the paints like rubbing off on your point shoes um when i uh competed at the missoula at the um ballet beyond borders competition that floor was slick as ice i fell on my ass i still have to find that footage and show you guys it was so embarrassing my first and last competition i don't foresee myself ever competing again oh my god though but apparently a bunch of dancers slipped on that floor so a if you're a dancer especially in america where we're really spoiled with our marley floors you want to try and practice as much as you can without using things like coca-cola or rosin rosin's bad for marley anyway but you really want to find a way to make sure you're really on your own two feet and you're using your muscles and everything to hold you up not sticky resins on the floor because if you get a floor where you don't have that ability and you're not able to really stand and dance on your own two feet i say this as someone who did that and cheated you will fall a lot more a um b oh and don't forget of course the rake stages right i never got the chance to dance on one of those. I would have loved to just for the jumping possibility of the big jumps downstage, oh my gosh. But I hear that like turns and everything else are a nightmare. So there's, uh, what else is there to think about? The floor itself could be really dangerous. If you are going to have to perform in different places, a, a mall, let's say, especially at Christmas, this is why I bring up Sugar Plum Fairy, because boy, everyone wants to see Sugar Plum Fairy. I watched a video of Joy Womack performing for, um, like, it was something that was on the news and they were filming it, and she had to keep on, like, stepping back again to, like, do the combination, because, you know, you'll do a sequence three or four times in a row on a diagonal, right, across the floor, and she had to keep on finding ways to move it back, because she only had space to do, like, one time. It was crazy. These are all things you want to take into consideration, and if you uh, know how to improvise, you can look at the space and you can do a quick assessment pretty fast if you're able to think on your feet. And so this is something that I want to help you guys think about as if you decide to continue with your career or you get a chance to perform Sugar Plum Fairy. First of all, let's just put this to rest. Other ballet dancers, yes, they will see you and judge you. We will always be judging each other forever and ever. You're going to judge me tonight and let me tell you, I already... I already like almost feel sick being in this tutu. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to get out of it and get back in my comfy little clothes. Um, they're going to judge everything you do. So just whatever, forget about that. But regular people watching you do Sugar Plum Fairy, they don't know and they don't care. I had a guy once tell me, oh, my daughter did ballet once. Man, she finished that. Done. Like she'd accomplished it like a like a merit badge or a trophy. She did one performance of Nutcracker and therefore had graduated and completely succeeded and beaten the score for ballet. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, that, that that's how it works. Do Nutcracker once and you've defeated ballet. Right. But people don't know. All people see is the cute, pretty tutus. They're especially looking for their daughter or their son in the performance who shows up for one second as a little mouse and then runs off stage and they go, oh my gosh, do I have to stay for the rest of this performance? And thank God, act two is full of fun, pretty costumes. You know, uh, all, we'll do a whole separate video on is it appropriate anymore to have these particular stereotypes on stage, but People love the shiny costumes, the smiley faces, and the fun tricks, right? And if you don't do a lot of tricks, then be, you're going to be the extra friendly princess at Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? And that's who I was as Sugar Plum Fairy. There is footage of me somewhere attempting to do foites at that last... I hated that last Nutcracker I did. Oh my god, I hated it. I'm sorry, Diane. I love you, but oh, that thing was awful. And they were... My foites sucked. It was bad. By the final performance, I was like, forget that. I'm doing torgetes in a circle. So there. But ultimately, the audience doesn't know and they don't care. They just want to see you having fun on stage. 
So even if you're feeling nervous and, oh my God, I have to get all my turns right now. You know what? Yes, for your teacher, for if you're in a company and you're getting paid a lot of money to be the sugar plum on their fancy stage that they've paid to put you on, fine. If you're doing a freelance performance at the Aberdale Mall, <laughs> no, no one cares, right? Um, and hopefully you still get paid. I got paid awesome money for being a freelance sugar plum fairy at a tiny studio. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was so much fun. And they're all so excited that you're there and you get to be, like I said, like a Disney princess. And it does come with some responsibilities. You have to be really nice. You have to be really kind and considerate. My first Nutcracker experience, I was 14 and it was at the Fox Theater in St. Louis and it was the State Ballet of Missouri, right? And so we're all waiting backstage and I remember this was still like, I don't know, like during rehearsal or during the first act. And of course we're running around. I was a Merleton, by the way. It's the best, best role. Uh, we're running around backstage and I go up to the Sugar Plum Fairies dressing room and she's in there in her tights, naked, smoking a cigarette. I kid you not smoking a cigarette. I'm like, what, 12, 13 years old? We were horrified. We were like, no, not the sugar plum fairy. It's like, if you need to go and sit in your tights naked and have a cigarette, okay, just shut your door and lock it, please, maybe, so that the young dancers don't like get their dreams crushed too early. I know it's gonna possibly happen someday, but uh, the point is just, <laughs> You want to be really thoughtful and kind and considerate, especially when you're a guest performer. It's a great opportunity. Um, but yes, the floors are probably going to be awful. The music may or may not work well. They may or may not want you to wear their costumes. Try to have your own costume that you can take everywhere, number one. So uh, number two, the space, right? So this space I'm in right now, God, it can't be more. This is huge compared to some things I've had, but um, we're looking at what? Six, six, let's say generously 18 by 10, maybe, feet, right? Um, so if I'm over here at the start, right here, right? If I did the full beginning, I'm already at the center coming over. And if I keep going this way, I'm almost off the stage for this part, which means since I'm already off the stage, oh my gosh, look at how big my little knees have gotten. I have my mom's knees. Okay, then... I can't go back to do the next part. So here's the thing. You always want to try and get in a good blocking session, right? If you're getting there with your partner, hopefully you don't just have to run on stage and do it. If you run on stage and do it, boy, fake it till you make it. And hopefully at that point you've had enough rehearsals and performances that you know how to do that with your partner. But if you can get in there and block really quick, you can already start going, okay, what do I need to change? Now with the Sugar Plum Fairy, there's so many different versions of the choreography, right? Obviously, if you're doing Balanchine, um, A, you're probably with only certain companies because they have to have the licensing rights to even perform it. There's all these rules. You cannot just perform it anytime you want. You can't perform it at competitions. You're not going to be able to perform it somewhere out in the open. They'll, I'm telling you, the Balanchine Foundation police will find you and kick your butt. So don't try it. But Nutcracker, okay, you can change the choreography, assuming your teacher's not there watching you going, why'd you do that? Again. You're the freelance guest artist. You can do what you want. So if I was using this space and I had to start, um, the floor is okay. I'm feeling good about that. It's, it's all right for bounce. Okay, yeah, that's good. And by the way, I'm not fully warmed up and I'm still way out of shape, you guys, so I will not be doing this full out. Someone the other day said, do some full choreography. I'm thinking I'm not there yet and I'm not rushing into it. Uh, but I will definitely mark through it as much as possible so you can see, get the idea. So if you're coming in on that first, those first notes of music, right? And normally like she'll come in, like maybe she'll come in and point doing these little things here and coming up. Okay, well that's already, I've used half my space. Uh-uh, no. So I might just stay over here. I'll back up, but if I'm in the corner corner, you wanna get as far into the corner as possible, right? But maybe you want to do a little footwork and a little bit of arm work, right? Work the crowd. Crowd work is like the best, because again, think, you are the Disney princess. So you are here for the little girls and boys, and you're here to remind the parents and the adults and all the curmudgeons that it's Christmas and magic and 
Miracles can happen in all of that, right? So that's what it's about. Or if you want to be a more of a queenly sugar plum fairy. It doesn't always go over as well. I think it's better to be more of a friendly sugar plum, but you'll come up with your own style and persona. Just stick with it, right? Um, so you've got an arm here and here and here and here and five and six and seven, eight, da 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 da, right? So don't have to move anywhere, or if you wanted to, maybe you're gonna go one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Da -da 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 -da. You could do that, right? If you want to do a little more fancy footwork. But there's a lot you can do with just those first eight counts. I like it to be a little more quiet at the beginning because if there's too much at the beginning, I think it takes away from what's going on later. Sugar Plum, for me personally, is about, she's like one of those beautiful glass figurines um, that, that looks like the fabric's flowing or some very delicate china doll, right? Something beautiful and crystal that catches all the light. And so it's more about little footwork, quiet, hitting the notes and just bing, that is what I'm into as a sugar plum fairy. Other sugar plum fairies are very much about, I'm gonna do the tricks. I've seen them do like five, six, seven turns, pow, and I mean, it's amazing. But they still had this sense of it being like a, like a toy, right? Like a toy. Um, so you, know, you got the Nutcracker and the sugar plum fairy. So I would do just the arms there again. So I would go bum, 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 bum. bum. Bum, 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 da 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 right? Now, normally, right, I should be doing your full, you'd be on full point for this, right? I'm just not, not in shape. da 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 Bum, 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 bum. You could do the arm here, you could do the arm there. When I first started doing this, obviously, it was very much about the here into arabesque, coming down. All of my technique here is for sh the front door, right? Uh, so we're not going to worry about so much about technique tonight, but if y'all want to comment on the technique, y'all knock yourselves out. I'm sure I can already see from here all the problems. But coming here, right, I would like to keep it right under myself here, and everything's right in the center. I like that it's in the center. Here, bum, 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 bum. Now this is where you can cut under yourself, right? So you're here and ba -da -da -da. I'm already backing up. Dun dun da, dun dun da, dun dun da, or dun dun da, whatever you want with the arms. Push through. Bum 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 bum. Right? Now I've already sort of set myself up. I have room to do that back, that that little next step, which goes on a diagonal back to the beginning, right? So you do that. Dun 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 dun. If you want to do the coupe or you want to do the oh my gosh, the uh Little like, ba -da -da -dum. oh boy, am I out of shape? But anyway, so bum 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 dun 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 dun. Now you can really step out and do a nice big day lape, tombe pas de bourre. And again, stay right under yourself. This is what's nice. So that's a moment where you can really lift and feel it and stretch. Dun 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 dun. And then you can again stay in place. Okay. So thinking about that, you can repeat it again. Dun 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 dun. Now, the way I do it at this point, there is the traditional dun 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 attitude dun 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 attitude dun dun and attitude turn and flick flick. Right? I'll put the music on so you can at least get an idea of what the heck it is George is trying to do. Dun dun. There's definitely not enough room in here. I'm gonna kick something. I'm gonna kick, boy, do you kick a lot of stuff when you are doing guesting. So instead of that, what would I do here? Think about what you would do here. I'm gonna give you a moment. So just think, okay, if you can't really do a bunch of attitudes, right, because your leg's like up here, and also thinking about the angle, right? If you're right under yourself, it gets a little funky the higher your legs get. And this big attitude turn, this would be the problem. That would be the area where I might kick something with my long ass legs. Da 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 da. Or ba da 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 da. Okay, so 
I know, for me, what I would do, I would do a nice long passe hold. It's probably not gonna look good here right now, but the idea would be, so, dun, 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 right, you're here. I might go, da, 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 how about, dun, 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 da, 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 bum, 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 da, 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 bum, 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 and then you could do even, because let's see, we want to end up, nope, that's different. Okay, I want to end up here. So think about the choreography, right? So, uh -huh. dun, 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 dun. maybe I'll even do this. This is great also if you're injured and you still have to perform, right? So again, all about performing, right? You might go, da 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 bum 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 da 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 bum 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 You could bow to each side. I know, you're going, oh my god, Georgia. What the heck? But too bad. Let's try it again. <laughs> Let's try. Susu turn. Dun dun dun. Da 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 Ha! Yeah. So just came up with that, and you've made space to do this next part. Now this choreography, I like this because you can really do it under yourself. Any kind of movement that you can do under yourself. I watched a girl today online who did a full like Dave LaPay and her leg was like bing up to her arm, but she then held it, slowly brought it down, right back under herself. Pot of Blu ray and ding, and it just went up, slowly came down, right under herself. If you can do that, knock yourself out. That's awesome. That's not my jam. So for me, what I like for this part is this nice little. Jump, boo-ray, 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 and jump, da, 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 da. One thing I like about the sugar plum fairy is hitting those quiet moments where it's almost like you become still just for a second. Da, da, bing, and it's like a little sparkle. You got the sparkle earrings, whatever. Ching, right? And again, da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Here's a moment where you can cheat, guys. Where is it? You've done these two jumps. You're here. Now you can start to back up again. Da 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 da. Bum. Okay. Now if I were gonna do it that way, hmm, depends on where you want to end up for the next section. So normally, dancers. I've seen dancers end up on either side of the stage for the final diagonal. Okay. So. For me today, I think, hmm, I think I will end up over there. So if I'm going to end up over there, then I want to cheat my direction that way. You'll see what I mean. So we're here. I'm going to do it again. Bing! Now I could do it all the way over there, or I could. Do it twice. Da 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 hooray. Da da da. Change my feet and then finish here. Now I can repeat on the other side. Ding. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ba 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 da. All right. You see where I'm going with this? You're probably like, no, we can't see anything. Georgia, what are you doing? Oh my God. Too bad. What I'm trying to say is that. You have so many opportunities with those little bourrées to kind of move yourself into the next position, like a chess piece. Where do you need to be for the next part, right? So the next step usually is that beautiful little glissade, pique arabesque passe. Glissade, pique arabesque passe, right? Really pretty, really sharp and clean. If you think you can fit that in here, great. I can already tell because again, my long ass legs and because also I just, <laughs> You <laughs> can't today. I'm going to do something different. What would I do? Hmm, I think I would do, well, I can at least mark through. I can't do the full pirouettes. Again, my ankle strength's not there, but I might do like a attitude and pirouette and atti um, attitude and pirouette, something like that. So let's see, how would I do that? Because I want to end up, here's what I'm trying to go for you guys. I want the bourrées 
to come back on this diagonal. There's a whole belief system about this diagonal from the um, from stage left to stage right is the stronger diagonal, and then the other one is the weaker diagonal. You'll notice that's why all the diagonals usually, like for the final thing, always start over here, dun 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 because that is the stronger visual diagonal. Don't ask me why, but it is. So, I want to finish it there. Hmm. Bum, bum, bum. So then that means I want to finish here. Okay, so taking it back again. I'm gonna just do it that way. Da 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 backing up. Da 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 bing da na 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 now I'm going to back up this way instead. Da 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 bing and a turn and and a turn and and a turn, you can do these right under yourself. Now, you can take your time on that. Whatever arms you want to do. No, 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 no. Right? Okay, let me just mark through that with music. Let's just see what happens. Oh my gosh, you guys. So, World Ballet Day. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to hear. version too. I like a slower uh, version, obviously. So let's see. Already I forgot what my thing is, but this is the thing. You can already tell. I'm playing with it. I'm trying to change it around on the spot. How long have we been streaming for? What, 20 minutes? I don't know. So if you have an hour before you have to go on even in a moment where you're going, oh my god, if you have the space. The hard thing is if you have the space and it's already on a stage where people are waiting and they don't want you to go on stage before the actual performance because there's already an audience and they're waiting or there's people going on before you so you can't even get on the stage. And that's where you either come up with it in the moment or you just stick to what you have and do the best you can. Again, it's more about the smiling and the enjoyment of the dancing, right? You've got to enjoy yourself. So you're enjoying yourself here. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe there's a little kid there and you can do this. Sometimes they will cry at you. It's, it's like stand-up comedy. You will get hecklers. And the hecklers are little kids going, I want Santa. Or like someone's like chewing and talking on their phone and you make eye contact attack with them and you're going, oh my God, what is my life? So if you can't handle that, if you can't like enjoy that and play off of it, because some of us, you can play off of that and have fun with it. Other people get um, like wigged out by it or it throws them off. So then you dance up to the everyone up here or you find a place on the floor if you're like really close. You can look anywhere but at the people. You can actually kind of glaze your eyes out if you have to. So okay, so I already forgot the arms here. Da 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 bum bum da 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 stretch here da 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 Da, 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 da. Here and bow, here and bow. Pirouette. Bum, bum. Right? Ooh. I know, I'm looking at you guys and I'm going, oh no, that should be more crossed. Of course, if the audience is there, then it's more here, right? 
Of course, if you're a really great dancer, you look good at any angle. Hello, but you know, can't all be Svetlana Zakharova. Da -da 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 -da. Then I'm gonna back it up again here. Da -da 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 -da. Do it again. Now I'm gonna back up this way. Um, I might do like a tonight just because I can. PK, PK, and PK. Yep, I might do that. Again, you can just play with it. It's your stage. And that is the best thing about a solo. You're alone. There's no one who can make it really obvious that you're doing the wrong choreography. That's kind of cool. That I always liked better than being a core dancer. It's so self-centered. I'm sure it sounds like it. But I remember thinking, oh, I much prefer being a soloist because you get the whole stage to yourself. You can jump as big as you want as long as you're staying on the music, etc. And there's no one there to make it obvious that you messed up. Oops. So... We're booing back. Now this last sequence, okay, this is usually like the showstopper sequence, um, sort of like the Great British Bake Off. This is the final thing that you're going to be making for the judges, and we want to see your most exciting things, right? Other than, of course, the code at the end, and you're doing your foites and looking amazing, unlike some of us who instead decided to do, I forget what I did, some kind of partnering. Anyways, I've seen people do the one that goes on point, hop, 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 PK down here, right? And you're on point, going in a little circle, bump, 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 and then they go hop, 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 and four turns, okay? It's amazing and awesome. For me, it never quite looks very good. I don't ever really like showing my butt to the audience. <laughs> it's just, if you're gonna do that, I would make sure you look really, you've got every angle worked out for the moment right making sure you've got those really nice edges but that's again about technique okay um the thing i did for that final one i remember i just did the padasha here uh suit new term padasha suit new so it was like padasha ding ding suit new padasha suit new padasha suit new pada boo hooray it was really basic and you're like oh my gosh so boring georgia yeah for an audience of ABT, yeah, they would not be impressed. But for the audience at Corona, they did just fine. Okay, Corona, California, and I loved that. That was a fantastic studio. They were so kind and so sweet, and the director was amazing. So it's also a great opportunity to really get those feet right. So you can go point, suit new. Now you're dead tired at that point, point. But still, if you can get it, it's a really nice thing, and you can make it a little small pasha, or you can make it a bigger pasha. Su su, parasha, su su. So you can do that at the end. Then you've got your da 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 da. Now here at the end, there's a little more room. I might do like one attitude. Oh god, you guys, my body's going. I'm scared. Da 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 da. Right. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 You might then at the end. I might at the end if I were in shape, I'd go like double turn here. Bum. Okay, they love that at the end. That's kind of like the Merliton ending. Anyways, so that's it. Now, you can add on that PK turn in a circle, but if possible, if so, if you're at a guesting and for some reason they have the music, always have your own music. Always have a copy of your music. You guys live in a time with your little phones and everything. You can just walk in and say, here it is, I'm good. Or if you don't even have it, go, oh, it's this link or this thing on Apple or this thing here. Back in my day, it was like CDs, and you get one scratch on it, and it's all over. And if you're using their music, you don't want to end up with the one that also has the coda at the end, and you're trying to do PK turns in this tiny little thing. You know, if you're good at foites, that's a great time to do it in these small spaces. Dun 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 dun, dun right? People love it. It's very impressive. The only tricky thing is, again, is the floor slick or not? Now, let's say you get a really slick floor and you know it, you can already tell. What I would do, you've been working on that beautiful footwork, right? So it all looks very pretty, but you can do some of it on half point. You gotta find the moments where, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do this part on half point. If you fall, if you feel yourself start to slip, just bring it all up here into the eyes, up like this, and then do it on half point or even flat, right? And use those arms and legs to stretch and pull. You, you change the focus, right? It's all about misdirection. So it's not worth it to fall on your ass at a mall performance of Sugar Plum and then have to be out 
uh, from rehearsal for your actual company job or regular dance job or whatever you're doing or something else far more important to you uh, for that. Don't sacrifice yourself for that. I'm sorry. Just don't. It's not worth it. Um, but let me try it again with the music. I'm going to mark through it again. You guys enjoy. Have a drink. Sit back and watch and laugh. It's quite all right. I'm going to be laughing at myself later when I see this. It's all part of the game. Okay, let's see what happens. Again, it's so quiet at the beginning, and this thing is really low, so I don't think I can even hear it. That's so sad. No, 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 go back. Okay. Oh yeah, so out of shape you guys. I'm going to go and change it. And again, maybe the bow, and the bow, hooray, down, spin, spin, finish. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, so I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, that was so not badass, Georgia. That was beyond. That's why I say the channel is badass, not me, okay? Um, it's all about just the badassness of ballet and all of the nonsense we have to deal with. But this is something I just wanted to share with you guys. And again, I've had performances where they gave me a costume that I actually got it caught in my partner's uh, arm somehow. It wasn't this one. And so we were supposed to do a major lift at that point and he couldn't even lift me because he was stuck on my costume. And so that's so exactly like what happens in, you know, the movie Dirty Dancing from what is it, the 80s? Where she's kind of like, that? Yeah, that's what we did. Well, we didn't do that, but we instead just was like, oh, let's just keep walking. Okay, here we go. And then he's walking a circle while he carefully kind of turns around and gets it off of his arm. So let's put it this way. You're gonna have challenges. Yes, we all want a perfect performance. We are perfectionists and we want it to be perfect. Perfect and brilliant and even more than perfect. For me, honestly, I almost looked forward to the performances where something might go wrong because then the challenge is what do you do with it? How do you handle it? How do you react to it and save the day? It's kind of fun and it keeps things fresh, you know, like, oh, that prop isn't there. I guess we're gonna have to Use something else instead of the prop, because it's not backstage. Thank you for saying what a pretty tutu, Claire Bear. Hi, Claire Bear. Anyways, uh, so those are my tips and tricks. I need to do the splits right now, because, oh my gosh, I just need to stretch out. By the way, on a side note, if you all did not catch, my last video was me trying out the perfect fit point shoe inserts. I have been wearing them this whole time. I do not have any tape on my toes and my toes feel amazing. I know, don't look at my technique tonight. Good, good Lord, it was atrocious. Atrocious, but uh, <laughs> my feet feel incredible. So I wanna say that is a major yes ma'am for the perfect fit point shoes. In, oh, that feels so good. Incredible. Um, I would love, if you guys wanna see me, <laughs> I am not joking. If anyone comes on here and comments and says, I want to see you try and do this solo, um, I will try it. I am actually like going to try a bunch of different things. I'm still working to get back in better shape. 
I don't think I'll ever get back to full on crazy shape, but um, enough that I can at least, you know, do some pirouettes again and do a little more point work. But I think it'd be fun to just try those, try some different solos uh, and let it be awful because it will be awful. But if anything, you all can watch the process and see what I'm trying to think about, what I'm trying to work on. I like sharing that with you guys. I like talking about some of the pitfalls in different solos. I've never tried the Esmeralda solo. Everyone does it. It's like the fur release of the ballet world. If anyone's ever worked, um, done piano competitions, my mom was a piano teacher and she used to um, judge those things. And she said the one piece of music that no judge ever wants to hear in piano is fur release. Like they played it all the time. And I feel like that's what it's like with the Esmeralda variation. Everyone, da -da -da -ba -na 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 -na. it is really cool. And I get why they do it, but oh my gosh, give the judges a break. Do something else, please. Anyways, um, oh, this feels so good, you guys. <sighs> yes, very, very good. So tell me what you want me to do, and I will try it and most likely look absolutely horrible and hilarious. And you all can feel better about yourselves as dancers and go, oh my god, at one point in her life, that girl got in companies. I surely can do it. If I can get into a professional AGMA ballet company, you can too, okay? Just, you know, <laughs> you gotta really want it bad. And then you gotta wonder if you're gonna regret it once you get it, because that's what happened to me. So, uh, in the meantime, definitely enjoy the journey, because even, you know, there is no arriving and succeeding. There's just, I don't think there's any such thing. I wonder if, like, actors who get Oscars, if they're standing up there and they get it, and maybe they have that moment of like, yeah, kind of like when you finish a performance and you bow, you know, when I danced with Cincinnati Ballet and like I had this like, you know, the huge audience at that big Aronoff Theater is just like, wow. And then you go home and you're like, that part didn't go so well. This part didn't go so well. I don't know. Like, do actors do that when they get the Oscar? I've heard there's that whole, um, what is that thing? The Oscar curse. You get the Oscar and then you don't work ever quite as well again or all this stuff. I don't know. The point is there's just no arriving. So, all right, I am gonna see if there's some, ooh, there's some comments, who is it? I love a good performance disaster. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you wanna see, okay, I have someone asking, they wanna see me do Key Tree Act One. Certainly, Max Daddy's here. Oh, awesome, happy World Ballet Day. Yes, happy World Ballet Day, mm-hmm, yes, okay. Claire Bear is a classical pianist and she hates for release. We have to meet someday, Claire Bear. I'm just saying we have to. That would be amazing because I think that's fantastic. Um, I have a piano in my house and I play for fun. I just adore it. And yeah, I will not even begin to try and learn that. Someone else is saying, my tips are so amazing and useful. Oh, good, from Chile. Ah, oh, Fabian. Hi, hi. Yay, hello, Chile. Como están ustedes? Uh, okay. Mi español no está muy bien, pero ojalá que este video está, um, va a ayudarte, uh, vaya, oh God, the ustedes, whatever, I'm not doing the fancy, vaya a ayudarte con su, con tu bailando y uh, el técnico de, de bailar, porque en, en mi opinión, eh, tenemos que ser más, what's the word for honest, más real con nosotros. Y nosotros somos un, um, una familia en uh, ballet. Uh, te, tenemos que ser supportivo, <laughs> supportive. We need to support one another. We need to be more caring. I think it's important. Today for me, for World Ballet Day, I watched the Paris Opera Ballet and I loved it. I, it's funny. It's not like they're the most impressive dancers. It's not that, right? I mean, I watch the Russian ballet and I'm like, why am I even alive on this planet? And how dare I even put a point shoe on? I know. You're like, oh, they're not all that. I'm big into the Russian dancers. I just love them. But Paris Opera is beautiful. I love their quality. I love their look. I, the dancers. I just, I just like it, you know? And the location. I mean, their studios are gorgeous. If I ever get a chance to go to Paris and just even take class there would be incredible. Um, yeah, so uh, I, and yeah, I will, I'll absolutely work on Key Tree Act 1. Why not? And you, again, 
Guys, once upon a time, I did all of this stuff. I remember being 12 and just go, seeing another dancer, one of the older dancers working on um, La Baya Dare. Uh, I think, oh, you guys are gonna go, oh, Georgia, you're wrong, it's not La Baya Dare, it's the other one. This is how bad it is, right? I've forgotten, but you know the, um, the solo that goes, and you're on point, right? Pop, pop, pop. Da 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 dum bum 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 pop 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 boo-ray 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 hot arabesque and dun 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 right so I'm like 12 and I'm like I want to try that and I just got up and did it like and we're talking full-on running on the point shoes doesn't matter no fear no nothing hadn't had you know multiple sprained ankles and broken feet just didn't know what pain was at that point it was incredible so now it's just different right um, I will say it's interesting to see I am more careful um, when I'm in better shape. Yeah, definitely not as concerned, but I am going to tell all of you if you are dealing with COVID-19 and you are not doing full out jumps and turns and all these things, be really careful and kind to your body. Even if you're in your 20s and you're like, I have no fear. Yeah, you may not feel it now, but you could feel it later, right? There's all kinds of things that can happen. So just take care of yourself. Be mindful. Really stretch afterwards and before. Do a good warm-up. And then, you know, as soon as we can all get back into the classroom together, I cannot wait to get back to class at Westside Ballet and have a real big studio where I can do full jumps. I don't even know if I'll be able to jump anymore. I'm like, there's this piece of me that just wonders. Maybe I'll never really get off the ground again. It's, it's interesting, but then I go... Every once in a while, I'll let myself go online. I'm finally at a point now where I can watch ballet and I don't just break down crying because it was so my entire world for so long. Now I watch and I go, oh, I miss doing that. You know, I kind of want to do that again um, to an extent. Some of it I look at and I'm like, I don't miss that at all. I don't miss any of that. But there are certain things that I think, God, I'd love to really just... Just try that again. Do a nice big grand allegro across the floor and really enjoy it. Um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. There's a really good article in, I think, Point Magazine right now where it's talking about, you know, just looking at what you want to do for your career. And if COVID-19 gives you pause because you're wondering if you do you still really want to do ballet or not. And it's hard because they said, you know, it's okay to do other things outside of ballet. Maybe you'll become a teacher or a choreographer. Or this person went and became a midwife instead. That's awesome. And she said it took her time to embrace that and to feel like she made the choice to leave dance because it felt good and right to her. But as someone who's been in it, I want to tell you guys, it's always easier said than done. And don't feel bad for the fact that it's really hard to let go. It's so hard to let go. And if it was your dream for so many years, or if it was your parents' dream for so many years and you're doing it to please them, or you're, they always say, don't do it to please other people. But on the other hand, if that's how you were raised or whatever, it'll happen when it happens, okay? And each person's journey is individual. We, everyone is going through something. When you look at that dancer in class who has all the perfect turns, and all the perfect jumps and the extension up to here and they're really snooty and maybe they're mean to you. Maybe they say, oh yeah, I'm way better than all of you. And they're, that person has things going on in their life. They may not ever tell you. You may not ever know. They may have success their whole life, but still they have stuff going on too. They have challenges, personal challenges, family challenges, things that you can't even imagine. So just keep that in mind. And yes, there are moments where you may feel jealous of other dancers, but try to remember there is no one exactly like you. And I'm not getting into snowflake territory here. I'm not saying, you know, that everyone, it's not a, you are better than other people. No one's better than anyone else. But each of us at the same time, we're all the same. We're all in this together. Yeah, whatever. We're all the same, but at the same time, we're all individual. So your journey is unique and no one else is going to be standing in your shoes at this moment in time making these decisions that you're going to make. So your story is valid, whatever it is, be it that you go on to be a professional dancer or not. All of it counts and all of it's worth it. Anyways, great rant, Georgia. Whoop, we have some more little comments and then I'm going to hang up. There's a million by Adair and Corsair variations and they all blend into one. Yes, definitely. I want to do, if you guys... Check out Um Actually, it's called Um Actually on YouTube. And it is this like contest, um, uh, like a game show for uber nerds. That's how I really 
really fully embrace the fact that I myself am an uber nerd. It's questions about like deep cut questions. Um, well, not questions. They'll make a statement about Lord of the Rings or something like in the second Lord of the Rings movie. Gandalf said blah 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 to so and so on the mountain of blah blah blah. Um, and the three p contestants will, they have a buzzer, and they'll go, um, actually, it wasn't Gandalf, it was Strider, and it wasn't on that mountain, it was actually blah blah blah, right? And so that's how, um, actually works. And I think it'd be so great to do that for ballet where you say, this variation was originally performed in Paquita in. 1504, and someone goes, Brr. um, actually, it wasn't originally Bakita. It actually started out in Don Quixote, but then the prima ballerina, blah, 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 decided that she liked that solo and wanted to put it in this other ballet for herself. So she just told them, I'm going to do this now. And she was a diva. So they did, right? Because that happened all the time. And it would just be like major nerdy ballet history. Um, I don't know if you would be allowed to do the um actually like them, but <laughs> it would be so cool. Okay, because I'm a dork. Uh, yeah, and I did a, got a lot of those um actuallys right. I was playing with my husband and my two kids, and we're all uber nerds, and I got several of them because it was about like, Harry Potter stuff and Never Ending Story and Star Wars and Star Trek, and yeah, yeah, I like all that stuff. Okay, any more comments? Let's see. Up oh, dance classes should be starting again in a couple of weeks. You are so lucky. Yeah, I've got to look into when they're starting here. People with something to prove are usually seeking the validation they miss out on from parental figures. Hey! Which is messed up, because on the other hand, my parents were always telling me what a great job I was doing. But it was when I was doing ballet. If I did other stuff, I felt like my dad would watch us and go, that's not true. But it definitely felt like if I was a ballerina, they were really happy. If I wasn't a ballerina, mm, not as happy. Yeah, they love me. Just don't know if they always liked me kind of thing. So yeah, definitely good girl, bad girl issues. Okay, that's it for tonight. Getting personal and I'm getting uncomfortable. Uh, this floor was brought to you by, I found this thing on Craigslist and I'm hoping it'll hold up its wood and then the Marley I found on Craigslist for really cheap and just laid it over it. Uh, the tape, all of it. It's, yeah, I did all this myself. I love it. But it was a small space. I hope that these tips and tricks helped you out. If you have some tips and tricks for when you have done any kind of guesting or performing, um, put them in the comment box below. I would love to hear what yours are. Um, and if you've ever had any kind of horror stories of performing as a guest dancer or with your company or your ballet studio, some of the things that have happened, I would love to hear it. I have so many stories where like the prop wasn't where it was supposed to be or I, I, I had a t one time when I tried to get on stage and the door to the other side when you go backstage was locked shut so we couldn't get back on stage. It was horrible. I'm sure I've shared it in another video and I'm sharing again because that's what we do. Um, but please share your tips and tricks and I will see about working on Key Tree and you all can laugh your faces off at me as I try and do it. I don't even remember which one Key Tree is. Oh my gosh. But uh, these shoes feel incredible. Again, I'm going to definitely plug. I'm not an ambassador for them. I am not affiliated, but oh my gosh, the perfect fit point thing. It's like it just goes right into my feet. I feel like I'm not wearing anything in my shoes. I don't feel any blisters and I have no toe tape on. This is incredible. I'm just like blown away. I'm like, what strange devil magic is this perfect fit? Who are you? Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you guys had a fantastic World Ballet Day. I thank you all for showing up. And for anyone watching this video later, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe, comment, like, throw shade if you want, bring it on. I always say that because it's like all of it is part of the conversation. Uh, and yeah, if you need to, sometimes it just feels good to throw some shade and be like, who do you think you are? You're not all that. I've done it myself. I have, absolutely. And it's usually when I'm just mad at myself or not feeling good enough about myself. But then sometimes it just feels good to throw some shade and then you feel bad about it later and then you promise you're never going to do it again. And then, you know, you get rid of that fake account that you set up to troll somebody. <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. Don't do that. It's very bad. I'm not endorsing that. Uh, 
yep, so I'm, I will uh, see you guys again soon, working on other videos. If you have any requests, of course, put them in the box below. And uh, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please stay safe out there. Election Day is almost here. I know people who are not in America, you're like, but uh, for us, it's a big deal here. We're really hoping that um, things will just, just, just get a little bit better. I don't know how, and I don't want to get into politics. You've been watching Ballerina Badass. My name is Georgia Reed. I love you all so much. I do, and I really thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this channel. Never give up. Never stop dancing, whatever that means for you. Toy, toy, toy. <sighs> off, 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 off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Yes, I do want to stop the stream.